Hello and welcome back to my world. I've had an interesting couple of weeks. Um, last week I think it was I studied and got my HR license so that's HR stands for heavy rigid so I got a truck license. Not a little truck license or a medium but a big one. I can't drive a semi though I didn't get that big a truck license but it was quite interesting learning to drive this massive truck that yes it was very scary at times as well so um, yeah it was something that I achieved this week and it will help me long term you know eventually if I get to the stage where I have a media empire I could drive my own unit truck type thing so um, that's kind of exciting and it would also open up quite a few doorways if for instance there's a film that needs a female truck driver that can drive you know a large vehicle without being a semi then I could do that so that's what I've been busy doing my nephews and my oh, well, my brother and his wife with my nephews have moved back down from Sydney back down to Melbourne which was awesome for me I've already had them two of the boys for a sleepover um, and the youngest one I haven't had for a sleepover before and he's five now but because they lived in Sydney obviously I didn't get him um, when he was younger but my other nephews told him all about the things that Aunt Leanne does when she does a sleepover. So the first thing he asked me when he walked in the door is, do we get popcorn in a big bowl? Um, because I have this 10 litre bowl, plastic bowl thing. And yeah, that's what I do. I make a big, whole big batch of popcorn because they usually watch videos when they come over before bed. And I just put a tiny bit of salt on, not too much, because you know you don't want to make them sick. But because the older two eat a lot, I make this big bowl, um, and so they can eat as much or as little as they want. And yes, I pop it from scratch in a saucepan, put it in a saucepan, and ch -ch 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 on the stove. Um, I used to sometimes get the microwave popcorn, but I find a there's not much in it, b it's so easy to burn it and it's so much more expensive than just popping it myself. I can get a 99 cent bag of unpopped corn, popped popcorn and cook it for myself and I can cook, you know, heaps. Whereas, um, yeah, the micro I don't like the microwave bags. Anyway, that's beside the point. So that's what I do. And we had bacon and eggs and pancakes for breakfast um, because one wanted, ba one wanted chocolate pancakes, one wanted scrambled eggs, and my sister came over and she wanted bacon with her eggs so we just made all of it and uh, we had it probably about 10 30 11 o'clock by the time we actually all got together got it ate it and did everything so it's kind of like we didn't have any lunch because <laughs> breakfast was so late and so big we didn't have lunch but it was good it was good so they enjoyed themselves my lounge room was totally trashed because that's where the bed was and the playground and they um I'm just looking at my landroom floor, don't worry, <laughs> don't mind me. Um, and I've got a treadmill, so they took turns on my treadmill all day and tied themselves out. So by the time I took them home, the little one was like um, in the car and he got home and, he, and yeah, he didn't really, um, we had to wake him up to have dinner. <laughs> but he enjoyed himself, so that was great. But the thing that's really struck out for me, which is what's made me want to vlog and talk and do everything, I've just had a shower, it's like, I don't know, 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm still awake, I'm about to go to bed though. Um, I, it's just really been highlighted to me about authenticity in who you are as a person. Um, I went to, the, not many people know this on the interwebs, but people who know me know me, that I went to church for eight years from 24 onwards and yeah because I'm old <laughs> and um, I went every Sunday I went for both sessions they used to do a morning and a night session and I used to go early for the music rehearsal before so I would spend almost all day at church on a Sunday and most days during the week I would pop in and I would help out in different departments and I had an in a couple of incidents that happened which made me want to leave so I left and about a month a month and a half ago a friend of mine came and she was all excited she said oh can you take me to church so I took her to my old church that I went to 
and it was it was kind of weird because it's changed since I was last there um, there's a few a lot of different people but because it was an, um, a long weekend weekend there wasn't a lot of people there so it was great I'd just go in sneak in the back do my thing and go but there were some people there that have, have known me for a long time and they were just so excited to see me and I was like mm, okay I would have thought I'd be forgotten by now well Needless to say, last weekend, I was sitting here on the Saturday night going, hmm, I'm bored. Oh, what am I doing tomorrow? I can't see my boyfriend because he's um, working on the truck, because I'm getting a tow truck. And I thought to myself, hmm, I think I feel like going to church. So I did. I got up in the morning and I went to church. And, you know, it's not for everyone, but for me, I just went. And it was really different experience my the senior pastor who was also the founding pastor of the church who I spent most of my time in the church with um, on a Sunday was there and I somehow ended up sitting next to him and he was so happy to see me he gave me this great big old bear hug and it was almost like I was part of his family you know some of the things that we did during the service and he was like you know looked after me a little bit and there's a few people that I hadn't seen last time I went who was there and I just said to them, they said to me, why are you here? And I said, oh, well, I felt like being here, so I'm here. Uh, if I don't feel like being here, I'm not going to be here because for me, my personal walk, I don't believe in religion. I believe in faith and relationships. So um, I'm happy to go to church when I want to go to church and I'm happy to do things as I want to do them now I don't do things because other people expect me to do them or because they think I should just to get that clear um, and a few people said well you should feel like doing it more often but obviously um, you know that's not where I'm at right now and I one of the things that I found really interesting it was how many people said what are you doing at church today and I'm like oh, obviously I'm here to worship you know praise and worship and listen to the sermon and I just like what did they think that I was there for you know as what did they think my whole world had come crashing down and I was destitute and um, in need of saving and restoring and you know whatever I don't know <laughs> or it could just be that they were just curious as to what made me go so that's fine but I I've been thinking about this thing you know with the authenticity and I really have found that one of the biggest things is if I say I'm going somewhere, like if I said to you, oh, I'll see you four o'clock Friday and we'll do coffee. Unless something goes wrong, I'm there four o'clock Friday, right? But I've noticed more and more people who make appointments or make arrangements, either when they don't turn up, nine times out of ten they don't ring they don't text message you they don't leave an email they don't Facebook you they don't do it it's like they don't exist and then after they think it's probably time oh I can talk to this person now because they'll completely forgot that I blew them off and didn't go to their you know meet them for coffee they'll just start talking to you again and I don't understand that. I just think that is so rude because, I don't know, maybe I was just brought up differently. But one of the things that I've noticed is people don't like conflict. And so if they think that, I don't know, I think maybe they think that not turning up or not ringing to say why they're not coming is so they can avoid conflict or something. But that's not authentic. That's not being your authentic you that you can be. And it just really made me realize this week how valuable somebody's authenticity is. Um, because if you say you're going to do something, just do it. And if you're not going to do it, just tell them that you're not going to do it. I mean, people can change their mind. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that just that whole, you know, lack of authenticity I guess or it's, it's almost like a lack of honesty a lack of respect for the other people I don't really know <laughs> I could just be out in little la la land myself but I don't understand it I don't understand how people can't be truthful how they can't communicate um, 
I once got told that I had no communication skills whatsoever, which was quite interesting. <laughs> and uh, now some of those people that said that are like, man, you work a room really well. And I go, what do you mean? And they go, you go around and you'll talk to anyone. And I go, yeah. And they're like, what do you talk about? I said, anything. And they're like, do you know these people? I'm like, no. Should I know them? And they're like, I don't know, but why are you talking to them? I'm like, well, I'm at a party. There's people here. I don't know them. How am I going to get to know them? I go over and say hello. Hi, my name's Leanne. What's yours? Or go and join me in a conversation and, you know, sort of acknowledge people and sort of get in that circle and listen to what they're talking about. And then if I've got something to say, I'll say it. If I don't have something to say, I'll just sit and listen to other people because that's what communication is. And they thought that I was doing things to manipulate and uh, I don't even really know. Like my brain just goes, what are these people thinking, you know? <laughs> um, I think sometimes even just this whole... Um, internet phenomenon you don't actually talk to people you can't read their body language you can't read their tone of voice is creating a whole generation of people that don't know how to pick up the phone and say hey what are you doing do you want to come over or don't know how to pick up the phone and say hey Matt I'm sorry something's come up I can't come that but the, the thing that's really daunting to me is that not only do they not phone or or whatever they don't text you they don't facebook you they don't email you nothing it's like it didn't exist totally just bypass that whole thing and move on and then a week later i'll start talking to you and just totally not ever talk about why i didn't turn up um i don't know what do you think about it do you think that is actually happening do you think that you know it's not authentic as a person to completely disregard it i don't know anyway I'm hoping to be back more online soon. Um, I've had a few equipment issues, been sick, um, worked on a few films. So um, I worked on Sheffield Films, two short films with Sheffield Films recently. Um, and I can't wait to see them. I think they're going to be great. Um, and I'm working on Under the Clocks and that's a feature film. So that's going to take a little while. We're just in the pre-preparation, getting ready for the funding and everything for that. Um, and I've also got a Tropfest film I'm working on next weekend, which is um, Prospect. So that's a sci-fi one. So that'll be quite interesting. I haven't worked on a sci-fi film before. So there's, you know, there's lots of things happening um, which, you know, take up a lot of my time. So um, sorry about that. But, you know, real life does happen and gets in the way of things. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow I'm going to the Melbourne YouTubers um, gathering, uh, get together. We're just having a meet up in the city tomorrow. So if you don't know about them and you live in Melbourne or if you're visiting Melbourne you want to know, um, just let me drop me a message and I'll uh, let you know how to get find out when they're going to be on. I have heard that we might be having a massive gathering at the end of the year and there may be some YouTubers from overseas coming. So that would be really awesome. Um, they're just in the planning stage and negotiation stage of going, hey, you want to come, 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 you want to come. And hopefully someone decides to go, yeah, I'll try it, fly all the way over to Australia. Um, I know that it's a 14 to 15 hour flight direct from LA because I did that in November last year and February of this year and it's not a pleasant flight. But the rewards are really great for doing the trip. So, um, so that's what's coming up and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.